Well, good evening, and welcome to this Friday afternoon edition of Cryptid Studies Institute Radio. I'm John Henderson, your host, and hopefully with me, as always, is my son, Elijah. Are you there, Elijah? Oh, I'm here, baby, and I'm ready for the show. Each one for fun, I see. Uh, Absolutely. Tonight, we have got a guest for you. Matthew Delf, and I am not going to spoil his introduction. I'm going to let him give it himself, but this man has over 20 years of boots-on-the-ground experience, and he's going to tell us all about his research, what he's got going on in just a few moments. But uh, before we get started, I'm going to spring this on Elijah real quick. Elijah, I understand there's been some confusion about our old uh, website before the relaunch and the reboot. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, we used to be going under a website as cryptidsi.org. Uh, we are no longer affiliated with that website or organization, but uh, we are now using cryptidstudiesinstitute.com. That is the official one. But it is in construction, yes, so be, is a please bear with us. Si. Or cryptidsi. Facebook page, again, no association to ours. That one still is attached to uh, Chasing Night Shadows, both great organizations, Cryptid SI and Chasing Night Shadows. We wish our friend Nathan Davis all the success in the world with that. Um, Absolutely. But we are currently Cryptid Studies Institute. So without further ado, is Matthew on the phone yet? Uh, he is. Let's go ahead and welcome him on. Big Matthew, welcome, can hear us? Matthew. Hello. How are you guys? How you doing, man? Brother? It is awesome to hear from you again. See, we just met Matthew a few weeks ago up in Harlan, Kentucky, I believe it was, and Matthew is a fascinating individual. Matt, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell everybody listening. Yeah. Uh, I was a total skeptic, didn't believe in Bigfoot or anything like that. Uh, I grew up, believe it or not, even with my southern accent, but I grew up in uh, about an hour south of Chicago, was born and raised up there in Indiana, uh, small town, uh, had, a, had an encounter up there that uh, changed my life forever, and that's what prompted my whole research and trying to get answers. It's at over 20 years now. Uh, the the biggest part of it at the beginning was just trying to trying to comprehend what I was dealing with. Uh, it, it it it's something that just completely changes your life. Uh, what had happened was it was the weekend before Thanksgiving, uh, and this is what got my whole research started. Uh, it was weekend right before uh, Thanksgiving, and I was 21. I always deer hunted in this one area. My parents used to live. It was the house was at this dead end gravel road. There were waterways, there was the Wabash River, Tippy Canoe River, and they met there and they called it River Junction, just outside of Lafayette, Indiana. Nothing but wilderness around. I was born and raised up there. Uh, we'd hear sounds, we'd hear different noises. I mean, but after a while, you kind of get used to your surroundings. You've never seen it, but you would. You know, you would hear hear these animal screams, uh, nasty smell, and we didn't know what it was, but it kind of, you know, as you're growing, if you grow up around it and it's never bothered you, then, you know, you just kind of adapt to it and don't think much about it. You're just like, oh, that animal's around. Well, my whole research started, it was... That, like I said, the weekend right before Thanksgiving, 1996, 
And my parents had already moved down south. And I was still still up there in Indiana. And the area that I hunted, I'd still go back to my parents' old house and hunt. The area that I hunted, to give you a, kind of a visual, it was on Sugar Creek. The creek was right behind the house. Dead end level road. My the land that we hunted on was surrounded by hundreds of acres owned by a doctor that never let anybody hunt there or anything like that. And I've got you know, always hunted after these trophy bucks. Grew up in the woods. Never Bigfoot never crossed my mind. Uh if it did exist, it was something out west, you know, or something in the Himalayas. But that that afternoon, that weekend right before Thanksgiving, changed my life forever. And uh, the area, it's got, it's, you cross the creek, you go up on this little plateau, and there was cedar trees and... There was a trail that went down to the creek, and I would always hunt on this. It's really thick up there, and I would I would hunt on this one deer trail. And you had to be pretty close to that trail to even see anything coming. Uh, started out like a normal normal afternoon. I had had my spot cleared out. It was a sunny day. I remember like it was yesterday. Uh, went out there, had the leaves moved out from the area where I sat at, and I sat out there, and all afternoon, no activity, nothing. Started to get dusk, and I was like, well, I better get back, uh, back home before it gets too dark. So I get up, and I'm 21 at the time, you know, I think I'm fearless, you know, you know how you are whenever you're that young. Think that you're oh, invincible. Absolutely. Well, I got up and I get my stuff, and this smell comes through the air. And this smell, I've smelled it before, but just associated it with some sort of animal. Didn't know what, but that smell comes through the air, and it was it smelled kind of like a rotten hay. If you've ever smelled rotten hay. It's a dirty, nasty, musty smell. And it had come through the air. And I smelled and I was like, okay. Well, I, I heard a couple sticks start breaking. I was like, uh oh, maybe a doe's coming through here. I'm going to have a buck trailing her. And so I'm sitting there and I'm got my gun up. I'm looking and waiting. Well, the movement gets even more as. It gets closer, I start seeing these trees start shaking. And I'm thinking, okay, there's a buck. Definitely got to be a buck trailing her. He's going through whatever to get to her. Well, then they really start shaking violently. And I'm hearing sticks pop. It sounds like sticks are falling behind me. I turn around, I kind of look, I didn't see nothing. I don't know if something was being thrown behind me or what. But as I look forward again, I'm waiting. I'm like, all right. You know, I got my gun up. I'm like... I get to pick which trophy buck these two bucks are probably fighting over. This doe, all that racket. Well, all of a sudden I heard this scream. It's a high-pitched scream with a growl in it. And I'm like, okay, that's that animal. I've heard it before, but didn't know what it was. And it had never been aggressive like that. We'd heard screams, stuff like that in the woods growing up, but never never that close or aggressive. So I got my gun up. I'm trying to look and see what this is. And then it it starts shaking the trees even more, and they start snapping. They start snapping these trees. They're shaking like crazy. I'm like, what in the world, you know? I'm like, what is this thing? As it got closer, there's a little gap between these cedars there's some saplings, and it's kind of tall grass, and it's the other side of the game trail that I was hunting on. As it moved through, it was 
less than 30 yards away from me. But it was dusk, and I see this bipedal figure. It reminds you of an orangutan. And as it, it was kind of like a glide as it moved in that little opening through the trees. If you've ever seen like a bag blow across a parking lot or something, that's how it kind of glided right. across through there. And I was like, what? Well, you know, I'm looking at this, and it reminded me of a orangutan. It was probably six, in between six, seven foot tall. Uh, the hair was dark. I couldn't tell because it was dusk. I couldn't get a real good look at the face, but I seen the shoulder, and I seen the hair kind of coming from the head down to the shoulder and the arm as it moved. And I couldn't see below the waist. I could tell it was walking, though, because you seen, like, legs move through the grass. And it had the long hair hanging down from it. And I was just shocked. I was scared, but I was confused. I didn't know what I was looking at. And it let out this scream. I mean, it goes right through you. And as it got in between these trees, it looked like a shoulder moved. And this stick, probably about probably about three foot long, and it was probably about as big around as the end of a baseball bat. And it went end over end, went flying past my head, I mean, with some force. If it would have hit me, it would have done some damage. And it let out that scream and that roar. And I said, forget this, I'm out of here. So I take off running down the trail. I'm scared to death. I'm like, what in the world is this? And as I stop right before you get down to cross the creek on the trail, I turn around and see if it's chasing, see if I'm going to have to shoot, what I'm going to have to do. But it wasn't behind me, but it let out that scream so it could still see me. It knew I stopped, and it let out that scream with that growl in it. So I took off after that, and I went and went and a buddy of mine, I was staying with him, and I come in that evening, I sat down. He's looking at me, he's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, I can tell something's wrong with you. I said, you're not going to believe it. He's like, what do you mean? I said, I said, I seen something out in those woods. He said, oh, I believe you. He said, I've heard those screams. I've hunted out there with you. He's like, what'd you see? And I'm like, I don't know. A monster, you know. I didn't know what it was. And it had affected me that it changed so the past 20 years I have been obsessed with this it will not leave you once you have an encounter like that so that's what got all my research everything started in the cryptid field first couple years I was learning about wildlife I grew up hunting fishing uh, even whenever I was younger uh, I would trap with my dad. He would take me along. So I, I pretty much knew the base, but as I wanted to know more, I'm like, you know, I have to figure out what this what this animal is. And then, so then, that's when I start taking wildlife conservation courses, uh, learn how to track, uh, just trying to up my level of, you know, knowledge. And... That that right there, basically what started it all. That that got me going here the past twenty years, and I've came, gosh, so far in the past twenty years that you know, I don't know how to explain it. It's you kind of laugh at people that don't have a clue of this stuff that's out there. You know, they'll tell you, oh, that don't exist, and you kind of laugh at them. You know, you're like, you have no clue. But that right there is what jump started my whole my whole research. That's an amazing story. I mean, really, it is. I can imagine that was terrifying. Yeah, it was. It was life changing. Definitely life changing. Kind of put a chip on my shoulder because now it ran me out of the woods, and I've never been scared of anything. And well, once you I encounter something there. like that, it's hard to be afraid. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I've tracked bears up to the trees that they've been in. 
within just a couple <laughs> feet of me. Uh, you know, at, but I want to see this. The thing, you know, I want to see. I want to see its eyes. I want to see it eye to eye. Uh, it might kill me. It might not. But that's the whole quest. Definitely the whole quest. If anybody and can then, understand what you're saying there, brother, I surely can. But after that, I mean, after I learned how to, you know, you have to, you have to start out with the basics, you know, to identify your different animal sounds, your different tracks, uh, and so on. And that was the first few years of my research was basically just get knowledge more of the wilderness. Uh, I started out flesh and blood, thought this thing's flesh and blood, but through the years I've come across things that, you know, you scratch your head on. Uh, you've heard, as some people call it, the woo. Uh, I always try and prove everything with a scientific backing so that it's, you know, Scientifically, a lot of this stuff that they call the woo, it can back up, you know. Uh, I'm, I went from the whole Bigfoot to pretty much just uh, a cryptid researcher. I've come across so many different cryptids through the years. Uh, I started, I, I used to do it solo and kind of just done my own thing and then few years back, I went to a Bigfoot conference. It was over in Harlan, Kentucky. It was where I met you guys. And uh, there was a group of guys there, and they were kind of local. And uh, I had joined up with them, went out a couple times. And they all had a little group. Well, they had quit after they had, they got into it, and they kind of fell out off and on so they just quit so I started running Mountain Empire cryptid research organization myself and it's helped it gives you know people report sightings to me uh, anything you know it, it helps it helps me get report sightings and it helps them let stuff off their chest to, without the ridicule People can talk to me. Same reason I do these conferences, because I like to see people, they'll come up to me and they'll talk to me about their experience, and you can just see a huge burden lifted off of them. But that right there is basically what, what got me started in all this. Uh, you name it, I can probably Never talk about back. it. Never Nope. But and have you ever had any more encounters? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, have you ever had any more encounters since then that were quite as intense as the first one? Not as intense. I've seen them through thermals. That was the that was the only one that I've actually seen more in the daylight hours. Uh, I've seen them through thermals. I've uh, had encounters where they've been throwing rocks. Uh, I've I've got seen you know all kinds of footprints tracks stuff like that uh, a lot of stuff I can't really talk about I've been doing a lot of research this past over the over the summer and spring with some individuals that are they are uh, pretty secretive uh, kind of give you a little bit of a detail what I'm talking about is they. Some of them get paid to do it for a living. So I've had to sign disclosure forms. Uh, I can't talk about what we've seen, where we've been, and so forth. If you get, oh, we understand. You get, you get what I'm saying. They've got a, right. they've got a backing. <laughs> they've got a backing that uh, you know I can't I can't really talk about. But some of them. I've been out there with some of them that, that are being funded. And if you follow the money trail, you know where it's coming from. So we know that Big Brother knows that Bigfoot exists 
and these other cryptids as well. Let me ask you uh, some questions about some other cryptids because uh, we it seems like every day there's some new cryptid being cited. Have you ever heard of, and you, you can say yes or no, have you ever heard of a flesh gate? I'm sorry, what was it? A flesh? A flesh gate. A flesh gate. No, I've never heard of that. Uh, that that's something that seems to be popping recently. up. We don't know that much about it either. What, uh, what about a rake? Yeah, i am actually been doing a lot of research here lately on a rake. Uh, Do you suppose that is I don't something know real, or is it something from a creepy pasta? I think it's something real. It, where there's smoke, there's usually fire. It's come from something. But I'm thinking it is something out of this world. I've heard of a rake. I've had reports of a rake actually in Kentucky uh, that had got into it, just tore apart basically a dog man. Uh, so if that tells you anything, these things are... Uh, you got to be something vicious. vicious to tear apart a dog man. Yeah, exactly. Uh because I thought that it was the apex predator on the block. Yeah, exactly. I did, too. See, yeah. I didn't believe in any. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you're good, brother. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I, I didn't believe in any of these other cryptids until, you know, as the years went on and I start coming across these things. And it's like, wow, okay, this is not, you know, your typical, this is not a Bigfoot uh not a sasquatch uh and my research partner uh I, we kind of cross over now is angelia shear i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with her but she's the director of tennessee move on and we do the alien bigfoot connection with other cryptids and some of the stuff that she has seen and uh she shows me evidence we, like I said, we researched together. We, you know, cross reference things uh, with the Bigfoot alien connection, UFO sighting connection. And she's really good. She just actually won the uh, uh, researcher of the year for MUFON this year. Uh, Let's see if we can get her but, on the show, Elijah. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, a good one. Yeah, that'd be awesome. She, yeah, she is really good. She, me and her. Are, Real good friends and research partners. But you you come across stuff like the rake and stuff. I believe these, these things are alien related. It's interdimensional. I used to not ever believe in the portals and stuff like that, but I've come across stuff now that it'll just blow your mind away. It's like a well, totally different level. I'm sorry, what? Go ahead. Oh, I was oh, just saying, I've, uh, I've seen uh, something interesting on Facebook the other day. Uh, I've been meaning to contact him back. A fella says he hit something with his car that looked like a rake. And I've been uh, meaning to write him back about that. Yeah, see, I don't know. I don't know if these things are... I'm not sure what you guys believe, but... I know for a fact now, I think that they, like for Bigfoot, I believe it's a flesh and blood. I believe a lot of this stuff is all flesh and blood. But they right. are high energy beings. They are high energy. If that makes any sense. Yes, sir. We definitely lean towards every, flesh and blood in most cases. Yeah, it's it, they're flesh and blood. uh Anything that leaves the evidence like it does, you know, uh, we, with the energy, the whole, that's where I, my, my research has gone up another notch. It has went from just checking for these animal things. Now I've, I've gotten into, you got to go into the quantum physics side of it. And if you look at it, okay, you've heard the eye shine in all these cryptids, right? Right. right. They're self and a lot of them, it's not shining; it's self-illuminated. So a bioluminescent so thing. Yep. 
So you have got to have some sort of high energy to produce that light. It makes you sense. See what I'm saying? So it's that's why I think. Have you heard of people getting zapped? Like by uh, a group we've of heard that a few times, I believe. Uh, we've heard of pinging. I don't think we've heard of zapped. Oh, my mistake. Okay, a zap. Uh, people will talk about how they get really sick. Uh, they get weak, disoriented. They'll break out in a sweat. Uh, whenever they come around these Bigfoot or Sasquatch beings, they they feel that they'll just get sick. I mean, just basically have to sit yes, down. Yeah, I've heard and, of that. Uh, if you look uh, with science, you can prove some of these animals produce infrasound, like tigers and elephants, and they send out that infrasound. And if a human is exposed to too much infrasound, it will make them physically sick like that. So Almost like a sound wave weapon. Yep, exactly. Right. And I believe that's what these things are doing. That's why I'm saying I think that they are a higher energy being than what people, they're like, oh, they can't do that, that's woo. No, but scientifically, I mean, we've got animals that can do stuff like that, you know. They got the sonar, the infrasound. Uh, look at a platypus. You know, it its bill, it uses, goes off the energy of other other animals to get its prey. You know, kind of like a shark uh, with the ampullae of Thor, uh, Lorenzini. Exactly. Yep. So you can prove all this with science, and a lot of people are like, oh, you know, but. You've come across things that, like I found tracks that have gone and then all of a sudden just stopped. Uh, you've got, like I said, uh, where some people talk about that, you know, the cloaking stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not real sure about that. Uh, I've never come across anything cloaking. Uh, I, I haven't either. I've heard that. people talk about it. Well, what about the Wendigo? Yeah. I know growing up, the Wendigo was almost said to just be a spirit, of, like a spirit of madness and cannibalism that come over a person. But now, for whatever reason, there seems almost to be a physical manifestation. Are, are you finding that as well? I've had reports of it. I think a lot of that is falls into your more your paranormal. Uh, I'm not. I'm wondering if they're running that. these rape things and being confused with it. They could be. Uh, I'm not. I'm not real big on the belief of like a Wendigo uh, that a person can shape shit or anything. But I believe it. It might be a uh, uh, some sort of paranormal. You know, like a demon type being. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, for example, say, uh, you know, it's just because uh, you've heard of the witches and stuff like that, but I think they're just pretty much just impasse that, you know, they've real sensitive, sensitive people. Uh, I don't believe that they can curse or anything like that. I think a lot of that's just folklore, but... It's always interesting. Same way with the Wendigo. I think if a Wendigo, if it does shape shift or anything like that, it's more on the paranormal side or alien. Because I, mean, I don't even wonder about the, the Rakshasa uh, or a Fetch. Uh, have you had any dealings with either of those? No. What is, what is a Fetch? I'm not familiar with a that. A Fetch, I, I mean, that, that goes all the way back to the Celtic land that kind of jumped upon when people immigrated from, like, Scotland and Ireland to the United States and got into the highlands of Appalachia. A fetch is oftentimes, like, a person will see a, almost a spectral form of themselves, like a doppelganger. But if they see this thing, it's almost always 
prefigures them dying. They call it a fetch, like it was. It's coming to fetch them. Hmm. That's interesting. As of right the words hair. almost. It's almost the words almost died out completely anymore. But but it, uh, it's an old. Uh, you, you find it throughout the Appalachian hills and hollers. You know, some people still remember what a fetch was. Yeah, that's interesting. That's and as of recently, we've been seeing a lot of stuff that, like doppelgangers and things of like that nature. Hearing a lot of stories of stuff of that nature. That's that's kind of interesting. I've been uh, uh, a lot of here lately researching. Uh, I've noticed. I always look for common denominators in certain subjects, and have you seen you know where these people come up missing? Out of thin air and stuff, uh, just yeah, like completely vanished. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and like the Dennis Martin case up in the Smoky Mountains, which I'm going to be heading out there this week. Uh, his family had met another family out there, out there in the in the woods in the park there, and their last name was Martin, the same as his. Uh, and they start playing that little boy, then all of a sudden he just disappeared out of nowhere. And I'm sure you guys have heard the story that like an hour away, a, a family hiking seen the little boy over the shoulder of a hairy man running bipedal. But their last name was Martin, the same as the family, which could be coincidence. But I've come across other things of uh, where people have been out. There's, I can't really talk a whole lot about it, but I know right. one incident that, that a group was out in the middle of nowhere. Nobody should be out in this area. Nobody. And this person had wandered into their camp, their base camp, and they thought that they were drunk the way they were acting. But the funny thing was is they said their last name was the same as the person at base camp. They gave the same last name and was acting That's really cool. strange. Yeah, trying. It, and they knew what they were doing there. Uh, and it was really, really awkward. I'm coming across like, other things where hikers are coming across people that meet people that act weird and when they ask them who they are or what they are, they've got the same last name. And I've been looking into that up. a lot. Yeah. Well, now, and, Matt, can I relay a story to you? And yeah. I know we're here to interview you, but I want to run this by you. I'm, we're about to do a a nightmare nugget on it. That's our little mini documentaries we do. When when I was a kid, I was probably three or four years old. We stayed at my aunt Myrtle's place. Uh, she lived out in the out in the wilderness, out in the country. You know, a lot of times we'd be out playing, and you'd hear these creatures. Now that I'm older and and have experienced it, I know what they were. They were like big feet hollering, but we didn't know what they were when we were little. They didn't really know. They'd tell us they'd say. Y'all stay close to the house. Don't go in the woods. There, there's a Bob Wouster in the area today. So they, they just made up a name. They didn't know what to call it. Well, we'd hear these things hollering all the time. But one day when they weren't out hollering, the most of us kids went out, and there was like a big muddy puddle out in the, in the woods. And we were like making mud pies. And my cousin Ginger, she was just a year or two older than us, come walking out of the woods. She's wearing a white dress, and uh, it's like a nice go-to-church dress, and she kept trying to get the rest of us to come in the woods with her and go further in the woods and play, and we wouldn't. We was just happy playing in the mud, making mud pies, throwing mud, all this stuff the kids do, and we just kind of shrugged it off. She turned around and walked back in the woods. Well, we got done playing. We went back to the house, and the car come, come to town, uh, where the, the older people were, come driving back in. They'd been in town all day. Guess who was in the car and been gone all day? 
gender. Mm, that is that. Yeah, that. See, I, I'm hearing cases of stuff like that a lot. And nobody's ever been able to help me figure out a, a, a good solution to what that was. So that's why I'm wondering: was it some sort of a fetch, not of me, but of ginger? Was it a uh, uh, some sort of a, a rock shasa, or was it something else? I mean, and you didn't add have any the idea? fact that they found part of the white hose in the bush later. Yeah, I forgot to mention that as we we got out there and went back looking, and there was like a piece of the white pantyhose that she was wearing in the bush. Hmm. Well, what I've been, where me and Angelia work together, she's told me about uh, these alien beings, like cloning, trying to be human shaped, but they're basically learning, you know, how to act like a human. And right. I'm kind of curious if that's not what's going on, that they can, they can read you. That's how they get your last name, that they can draw, you know, and try and draw you in to take you. Like maybe alien abductions. Exactly, exactly. Because we're Bigfoot activity and your <laughs> UFO activity, usually they, they usually fall together. Uh, one example, I think it was 1976, it was in Pennsylvania. There was a, a a big UFO outbreak. And then if you look back through, and then there was like 276 cases that year of Bigfoot sightings. Uh, it's like they go hand in hand. Uh, what it is, we don't know. We we think we're... It's, it's like it's right... We're right there on the edge of trying to figure this out. But... You can't quite... I think we're dealing with more than one. I think it might be uh, more... I might be right. I think it's maybe some alien activity. Uh, I've heard of different theories of where the Bigfoot are alien hybrids. And you have your regular ones that are just a flesh and blood. And then you have your... The hybrids that come through, travel through portals, stuff like that. Uh... Now, would you think the Gugwe is, is kind of a hybrid? It could be. It definitely could be. Uh, but then again, I mean, you've got, for example, you've got your different, kind of like a Bigfoot, is, you got your different species, I think, kind of like with a dog. Kind of like with a dog is what I believe. Uh, and then, you know, you've got all these other cryptids, uh, like Dogman. I've never, never encountered one, but I know you guys are at kind of your guys' is, uh, area right there, the whole dog man. Uh, I got a lot of questions about that to ask you guys, uh, but like, the, do you believe, okay, I'm going to turn this around. Do you believe that there's a connection between the dog man and the Bigfoot? I, the honest answer is I, I don't know. I think it's kind of strange. I, I never believed in, in dog man until recently when there's just so much overwhelming whelming evidence that uh, the, the thing exists, or, or, excuse me, exists. There's doctors and lawyers and police officers and government officials and all, all these people that are seeing these things, people who know what an animal is, you know, that knows the difference that if something was a hominid or if it was canine, I, I, I don't know if they're related to each other, but I think it's very odd. I, I even recently had a report of like a pack of dog men killing a Bigfoot. I believe I've heard of uh, the... Uh when there's like a big war or something reported between the dog men and the Bigfoot or something like that years ago? I have heard something like that. I've, I've even heard that uh, Big Feet have been known to steal uh, 
like dog man pups and kind of raise them and use them like as early detection systems if something comes in the woods. Uh, but I've also heard that dog men and Bigfoot hate each other and don't even do, uh, go on the same sides of the woods usually that the other one exists in. And, and I've noticed a phenomenon that, like in state parks and such, where dog men and Bigfoot are both in the same park, dog men always seems to appear in the north side of the park, while Bigfoot always seems to stay in the southern part of the park. Oh, wow. That's pretty interesting. And I don't know why yeah, that I is. Want, I want to get with you uh, later on and uh, do some uh, research because I'm drawn to land between the lakes. That has. I definitely would like to get you out there. We're ready to go back to has. another investigation there. But I'd like to yeah, get yeah, go back to the too. I'm sorry, what? I'll just I said, I'd like to get yeah, you up at Harlan. Oh, yeah, Harlan is, uh, uh, i tell you what, man, Harlan, I get a bad feeling up there. I do. I get a bad feeling. Uh, it was that day that we were up there at the thing, uh, I was warned, forewarned before I went there. It's kind of weird. I didn't think much about it at the time, but I was told... Be careful. They had felt a bad presence there at the uh, con that we were at. And I was like, okay. I didn't think about it. But I don't know. That day, though, that I was there, I was physically sick to my stomach that day. And I go outside and I would start feeling better. And I go back in, I start feeling sick again. And I didn't think nothing of it. And then as I was coming home that day, got a phone call. And uh, my uh, good friend that warned me said, I told you, I warned you, there was something there that it gave off bad energy and was making you sick. And, and that kind of blew my mind, but... I drove around up to Harlan, that area there, and I've done a little bit of research up in there. And I just get bad energy feeling up in that area. Well, there's, there's so something been there because I, I found articles and evidence that there were giant human skeletons found in caves there. And, and I've got the articles that uh, have almost been lost to time in newspapers where they found giant human skeletons there, but I wonder if some of the uh, supposed haunted ar uh, artifacts that Marcella had, if something there was giving off some sort of an energy that it was making you sick. That, that could have been. That could have been. I didn't... Because she had those dolls there, didn't she? Yes, she, she did. Had, she had a few. I don't, I don't know where I fall on the belief in that kind of thing, but, you know... Uh, I've definitely heard of haunted objects and possessed objects. So there may have definitely been something there that was affecting you. Now, while you were there, you and I were talking. At the end of the day, we were talking to a young lady, and you might find this fascinating. You remember a young lady telling us about a dog man that was coming harassing her uncle's property? Yes, I talked to him. And he shot it in the foot, and, and, he, and it damaged the dog man's foot, and it would still come around. They could hear it dragging that stump of a foot. Yeah, uh, I've actually, uh, I was liking to get a hold of him. He actually had a real good picture of one uh, he showed me, her uncle. And uh, he said that it had moved a car of his. Uh, and he, he he was showing me these tracks. He's like, this is, this is old three toes here. But the track that he had showed me was similar to the track of a devil monkey. Well, this is going to get really weird for you right here, Matthew, because on the other spectrum of the county, there's a family, and I'm not allowed to say too much about it, that's having trouble with, at first they thought it was an Ozark Howler, but it has a dog-like footprint that's three-toed, 
and the other foot is almost like a semicircle. I think it's what, what's harassing this family is the same creature that got part of its foot shot on. That, that could be. Could be. Uh, I know the, uh, the devil monkey was real big through the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, I thought maybe the dog man was, you know, just misidentified for a devil monkey because now, they're really like aggressive. A, a devil monkey, it's, it's more like a baboon. They don't get as tall as uh, a, uh, like a, a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot, but they've got a tail. They leave a three-toed track. They run on all fours, and they stand up and walk bipedal. Their face is similar to a uh, baboon. Uh, they they are really, really aggressive. And they can get in between, I think, standing up in between four to six foot tall. Uh, but I think it was 1934, back in Pittsburgh, Tennessee, they had a huge outbreak of these things terrorizing the town. And they had sent... Uh, townspeople, everybody got their guns, you know, and went out and tried to hunt these things down. But it used to be really bad up through here. And I always thought, well, maybe that's what the dog man, people are saying, that the dog man, you know. But maybe. the dog man are usually bigger, bigger than these. Well, I can tell you, oh, what, I've got a picture here, a good picture of a dog man that a friend and fellow researcher took. And it is something entirely different from anything I've ever encountered. It, it looks monstrous. I wish that I could release the picture, but I, I just can't because it's not my work. Yeah, it's a right. kind of private research. Yeah, I understand that. Trust me. I I wish I could talk about some of the stuff I had I've done this summer, uh, <laughs> and it. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I actually had to sign forms. You know. Uh, we're very well aware there. of confidentiality clauses. Yep. Uh, I couldn't even have a cell phone on. Uh, when, I, when I first got there, I was letting family know, you know, hey, I made it. Uh, first thing they said was somebody's got a cell phone on, you know. Uh, and oh, I've wow. seen, seen some stuff that the human mind, you can't piece together. That's why the government knows about this stuff. They're hiding it. They won't ever. All these Bigfoot researchers, they always say, "Well, we're going to prove it. We're going to we're going to show a body." You'll never do it unless they allow it. You will never do it unless they allow it. It will not get exposed unless they okay it. They will kill you off before they let that get out if they don't want it out. Why do you suppose they don't want it out? I think a lot of it is because, well, one thing everybody always talked about, you know, the lumber, you know, the you got the logging industry they lose because it'd be an endangered species. But I think most of it is just because a lot of it is more interdimensional stuff. It is along with the alien, the UFO stuff. Uh, you've got Things that I never believed in portals until I seen something, uh, and that's just been here recently. Uh, they, I think it's because you open up Pandora's box, and everybody's going to want to know what else are they lying to us about. Then they're going to have to explain all these other things. It's, you think it's, it's a bigger picture in any way. I'm sorry, what? Do you think any of these? Alleged portals tied to CERN. Mm, I don't know. Are you I'm familiar with now, the uh, super collider uh, overseas there that uh, they supposedly tried to open different portals and things of that nature? That's the one that's down below ground there, right? Yes, sir. They even opened yeah. it with a pagan festival with like hairy looking creatures. Uh, in some kind of a play as they opened it. Yeah, see, I think that they're that's where they're trying to uh, 
the government's trying to create their own with this energy, but and a lot of people. But yeah, I think a lot of that is with this stuff. These these portal these it's the parallel universes and stuff like that. You've got this stuff coming through these holes and these. That's why I say like some of these Bigfoot and stuff could be, uh, you know, a hybrid because the energy, you have got to have so much energy to open up that portal. That's what they're trying to do there where you're talking about, down below ground right. there. Uh, and they're trying to produce enough energy to actually get one to open. Uh, I think a lot of it, yeah, is similar to that. That's why they're trying to do it on their own. Uh, I believe that uh it's 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 too it's too complex for the common day person to understand you know oh, that's why they ridicule I, all these big foot spiders uh, you know just the whole portal you know i mean these different you know universes uh parallel universes i mean if you're it almost ties to give the away too much. as well with all the overlapping <laughs> universes. Yep. I'm trying not to give away too much. Uh, Even I mean, if you get too close to I the work you're of, doing. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, one of the most terrifying lot, books that I ever read had to do mm-hmm. with uh, scientists accidentally tearing a hole in the fabric of the universe into a de- into the demonic realm. And these things were spilling out of this realm. Yep. Opening up that portal and different things are coming through it. Kind of like at Skinwalker Ranch. A lot of weird stuff going there. Hey, now you're not going to be one of those guys out there uh, charging into Area 51, are you? I'm a lot smarter than that. (laughs) I I believe it might be a couple of guys get shot if they start trying to charge onto a military base. Yeah. yeah, that's people are just that is so ignorant. That is the most that that goes to show you what the government want people to think to believe. Uh, your biggest part of the uh, population, I hate to say it, but they're idiots. Uh, I say all the you, time we in the movie Idiocracy. Yep. They they believe whatever is fed to them, and that's it. They don't think for themselves. Uh, U.S. government would wipe oh, them out. They 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 would wipe them out in a heartbeat. Uh, and they would be within the, a legal right because they are trespassing in a government facility. Exactly. Exactly. I don't think there's I a whole lot there. Are. Probably I'm not, sorry. but they ain't going to let somebody break, break federal law to no. come in and just prove a point. No, exactly. I, I saw articles this week, and I wonder if you've seen them, that China, and I can't remember, I think it was uh, Breitbart or Reuters, or it was a reputable news organization, is reporting that they are successfully making human-monkey hybrids in China. I've seen that. Kind of like Planet of the Apes. Yeah, they said that so far they, they've kept it in the embryonic state, but they do have human and or human ape or human monkey hybrids in embryos. They say that they haven't let any be born yet, but I, if they've made embryos, they've let a few of them be born, I would guarantee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's like Stalin was trying to do that way back he had a uh, orangutan and they was uh trying to impregnate her and it never it would it wouldn't it wouldn't take and then this woman had come in and her husband had been killed in the war and she said that she was willing to take the semen from an orangutan for them to uh Put it in that she would be the be the host for that if they want to try it, and then all the reports or whatever they say stopped. They didn't see nothing 
else after that. But I'm sure they've probably done, you know, done a lot more. Right. They just they're not going to tell I anybody. I, I've got news but, articles here somewhere because I've been saving this stuff for years uh, from the '90s, where they said back then that they had uh, got semen to jump the genetic barrier. You know, semen from one creature to fertilize eggs of another. Oh, wow. Uh, to where they could have human-animal hybrids, or chimeras, really, is what they would be. So I don't even know where that research went uh, from the 90s. Yeah, they, they were they probably, probably got scrubbed under the table. Probably, oh, yeah. Uh, I had actually... Oh, I know uh, what I wanted to ask you about. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say... I had my first run in with the whole government thing back in 2003 and uh kind of a funny story was uh they had a uh uh Campbell County there in uh uh Jacksboro and La Follette, Tennessee. Do you remember that back in 2003 they had like for a week and a half straight they had like Tons of Bigfoot sightings going on right there. And I don't remember the news. Well, they they tried to play it off as it was uh, maybe a circus or somebody's monkey got loose, and they had these people come in. Now I'm not too far from that area, and my job. I'm an operations supervisor at my job, and so I had guys that worked for me that lived there in that area, and they said, man, there's something definitely going on. And uh, they were talking about black helicopters flying around, stuff like that. So I started talking to them guys, and I'm like, so where are these uh, people, uh, you know, what area are they witnessing these? And I was looking on the news, and... They had, it was up behind, there's a lake back in there. And, of course, there's a little park, little state park there in Jacksboro, where La Folle and Jacksboro meet there. There's a lake back in there. And they were seeing a lot of it in that area. Well, the all of a sudden it stopped from the news. Wouldn't report nothing else about it on the news. And then when they did, they would put the biggest, hillbilly they could find to make a mockery of it uh they would put them out there and they would say yeah they would have this woman she's like it was out there and it threw a kitten at me you know and everybody yeah, laughed it's not ridiculous. And, yeah they that's how they make a mockery of it to make people think all oh, them people are crazy but i talked to a woman they were going around and do you remember the skunk ape the mica, the they had the skunk. pictures of. Well, they had different pictures of different types of, like, Bigfoot from, like, patty type to they had the skunk ape. They had that picture, and they were reporting that it looked like that. Uh, they said, that's it, the skunk ape from down there in Florida. And they matched it to that. And I went in there and started poking around and... I started interviewing some of these witnesses, and they said that the people that were in there said they were the BFRO. And But they showed up at this one woman's house, and they told her that they were it was the sheriff of La Follette, and he had these guys that looked like SWAT, and they said they were BFRO. And that she said that they told her to put her animals inside, that they was going to kill it. And she's like, well, there ain't no need to kill it. She goes, it's it's killed a few of my livestock, but it never really bothered. You know, it's been out there for years. And they're like, no, it's a nuisance. We want them all gone. And they went out there and supposedly killed it, is what she said. Whether they did or not, I don't know. But there was reports of the black helicopters, like she said, that took it out uh, in that area. And there was nothing else on the news. And that, after I was down there nosing around, that's when I started getting phone calls 
asking, they were claiming they were TV shows, stuff like that, asking me, so what do you know, you know, we'd like to do this show. Uh, we're from the History Channel. We're producers from the History Channel. We want to do a show, follow you around in the woods, help us out with a storyline, tell us of an area that you know of. I mean, they were fishing for information like crazy. And right. So that was that was my first whole run-in with the government issue. Uh, and then whenever I wouldn't tell them nothing, they would they would get discouraged. They'd hang up. Then they would call back somebody else a little bit later. And it's happened ever since, but it's it's quit here recently. And I think I know why. But it's not, you know, they they keep an eye on that stuff and they make a mockery of it. Same way they're doing, I think, with the Mammoth Cave ordeal. I was going to ask you if you'd heard about that yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to go out there and poke mm-hmm. around when the, the flurry of activity dies down a little bit. Well, see, the whole story on that, they kind of made that gunman. They, I have not heard his name yet. Uh, they, they gave his name. They, I can't remember what it was. Well, I know they've got the couple, and they put them on there, and they said that, he was walking around their camp, and they said that he, he told them he was looking for what destroyed his camp, and uh, they heard some whoop sounds, and he started going. He went in that direction of them. Then that's when they heard gunshots. Uh, but then they said that there was no evidence. They didn't see no evidence. The only monster out there was that man with the gun. You know, kind of laughing oh, and joking. Oh, they say that. Uh, but if, if they heard the whoops, then obviously they had to, they, if they admitted to hearing that. Activity. Yes, exactly. The, exactly. The Sunday before this story broke, we had a gentleman call us. He had heard us on the Venomous Fringe, and he called us to tell us uh, some information, share, you know, one of uh, a program that he come up with but to tell us that he had had an experience with either a Bigfoot or a dog man, he wasn't sure which, in Mammoth Cave Park. So that's 412 miles of cave. This. Yeah, that's 412 miles of cave that's just what all that they have uh, mapped out or discovered. Who knows how much more? That's a lot of area for stuff to be moving around, you know it? Four hundred and twelve hey, miles. Underground. Yeah, exactly. That thing it could be going, you know, anywhere. But the whole the I like how they tried to uh, put off that they were the BFRO in that. Now I'm I'm real familiar with the BFRO. I'm not a member. I wouldn't be a member. But I've got my own group, but I do a lot of like I said, my stuff, I, I don't like to have to follow their rules or whatever, but I've been out with some of the BFRO expeditions, and what showed up there in the fall, it was not BFRO. Right. That's for sure. You know, uh, but, Matt, we've got something coming up that maybe you'd like to be a part of. Uh, we have rented a, an entire summer camp, 48 cabins, bathhouses, uh, meeting hall, Dining everything. Hall, smoker. Yeah, a, a private dock, you know, for like canoeing and stuff like that. We've rented this thing uh-huh. for a five day Crypticon next July. Oh, awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd you know, uh, we'd love to have you involved in some capacity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. I definitely. Definitely, yeah. And, you know, we could go out on some night excursions because, you know, it's right in a park where we've had activity before, uh, or it's close enough we could go down to LBL. But five or 48 cabins, and uh, well, there's just a, a huge amount of stuff we could do there. The last couple of days, we could open it up to the public, but, you know, all the researchers that wanted to get together and just 
spend two or three days researching together, sitting around telling horror stories or research stories. Oh, yeah, definitely. You uh, just let me know the date, and I'll mark it down on my calendar. July 1st, July 1st through the 5th. Excellent, definitely. We're really excited about them. Yeah, yeah that, we're, we're really awesome. excited. We're trying to uh, put together a committee of people to help us plan it and organize it, make it just the biggest, best thing that this part of Tennessee has ever seen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, count me in. <laughs> Well, all right. I love doing well, that. Awesome. I love going out researching too. I do a lot of and research. Uh, that's a good spot. Good, good. I'm gonna do yeah, the, a lot the of research. Yeah, that we saw four big feet one night th- uh, in a foggy area. Well, I, I wasn't now, part how, of that night, but now, how many, <laughs> how many have you guys actually visually seen? Have, have you ever seen a dog? The fog. Uh, no, but we're pretty sure that we our first real encounter was with one because we were in this area called Werewolf Springs. And, you know, things usually get a name like that for a reason, and there's a legend goes behind it. But we're in this park, and a train goes by in the distance and blows its whistle, and when it does, man, this creature just starts howling, I mean, it sounds like a 800 or a thousand pound wolf, and uh, it, it just would sneak you inside and out. So we're pretty sure that that's what was in that park. We originally thought maybe it was a Bigfoot, but we've never heard anything else that even comes close to that sound. And we've reported a lot of Bigfoot noises and never heard anything else. So whatever it was, was it a Bigfoot? It wasn't a natural animal. That's pretty pretty interesting. See, I've heard, uh, well, I've been, uh, I work with a local vet around here, and they'll let me know, like, if livestock has been slaughtered, and uh, I call this one area Horse Kill Road, because two horses last summer were just slaughtered, basically, out there, and uh, had four witnesses that reported they didn't see, you know, what had actually killed the horses, but full-grown horses, you know, something that kills them is pretty aggressive, pretty nasty. But right. uh, they had reported to me that uh, the uh, they seen this animal. It jumped. It was in the road, and they had to stop, and it looked at them. And they said the closest thing that it resembled, it wasn't a wolf, it wasn't a bear, it was bigger than a dog, it wasn't no mountain lion, but it resembled a hyena, but it wasn't a hyena. They said they don't know what it was. They said that it was super fast, and it just bolted. Uh, Now, I tried to get on that one man's land, I was wanting to see where the actual horse kill site was so that way I could I can track what came in and out of that field and that old man, he wouldn't have nothing to do with it. He wouldn't let me on there. He said, I don't need no circus out here. You know how some of them old timers get. Right. Uh, but he wouldn't let me, uh, but I have heard uh, like a howl down through there, and it set coyotes off like crazy. Uh, so I'm not real sure yet what I'm dealing with down there. And it's so thick down there, and there's a there's a creek that runs along the edge of it there. I think something just uses that as a... Uh, it, it basically uses the creek as a... Uh, like most Bigfoot, stuff like that, they use these waterways as routes. And I think that's just one right. that stops it as it passes through because I haven't heard nothing else yet about it this year. But last year they had the two horses killed within like three weeks of each other. And they were like just a mile apart, to two separate farms, and they were just a mile apart. And I asked the uh, DNR guy, and he told me he didn't know what had done it. He said that it was just a a bloody mess. He said 
and this is what kind of caught me. It was funny because he told me that it had killed it. He said it snuck up on it and got it while I was drinking because they found it dead in the pond. And I said, no. I said, a horse is going to know when there's predator around. I said, a horse will go to water to escape a predator because most predators will not go in the water after them. It was trying to get away. Yes. And whatever this was, it wasn't scared of the water, and it got it anyhow. It wasn't scared of the, you know, the pond water. Uh, So that kind of cuts out, you know, mountain lion. Uh, Yeah, they don't like water at all. No. uh, Most of the time, I mean, I've seen some cheetahs, stuff like that, you know, over in Africa, try and and get some stuff like an alligator or something, but they usually try and stay along the edge of the bank or... But your your main mountain line normally don't don't go near, you know, a water source. And that's where this horse went to because it knew it was there and it went into the water. And he's like... But he told me he didn't know what it was. He just rode up as a bear attack. He had no clue. Oh, wow. They so just rode up as a bear attack. Well, Matthew, we are out of time. We are actually over time. We're... Uh... The live shows done stopped and weren't over time. We're going to have to burn this off and post it uh, (laughs) later uh, to get the whole show out there. But uh, in closing, can you tell us a little bit what you've got on the the burner that you've got coming up? Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of field research here coming up. I'm going to be in the Smoky Mountains this week. Uh, I've got a... uh, Another area, it's an undisclosed area. I've had some activity here this couple weeks ago. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more research in it. I actually found some 17-inch tracks out there and had rocks thrown at me out there. Oh, uh, wow. Going to go back out in that area next weekend. But this week coming up, I'll be doing some research in the Smoky Mountains because I had a lot of reports out there. But I've got the uh, Cherokee Comic Con will be... Speaking at it over in Cherokee, North Carolina, it's coming up in three weeks. Uh, Travis Walton from Fire in the Sky, he's going to be there with me. Angelia Shear, my research partner, they're going to be there talking we UFOs. Met Travis. That's, a, that's an awesome dude. Yep. Uh, then I've got the uh, Georgia Bigfoot Conference in October. Uh Got the uh, Tennessee Bigfoot Conference the weekend after that at the end of October. But got a lot of a lot of events going on, but nothing but research in between then. And if anybody has any sightings or reports, and I'd like to get back with you guys and try and do some research out in the field. Yeah, yeah you ought to come down to some of our now. research areas sometime. Yeah, I, I definitely... Uh, want to hit that area. I'm drawn. I'm telling you, I'm drawn to land between the lakes. Yes, anytime. Yeah, because we've had Bigfoot activity there, and we've had Dogman, we believe, activity there. And we've got a cost coming up on September 8th in Kentucky, or 7th and 8th in Kentucky, so we're looking forward to that. Okay, which one is that? Is that the... uh, Uh, Crypticon. Is that the... Oh, okay. Yeah, in Frankfurt? Uh, it's in Lexington now. Oh, is it? Okay. Then I may, yeah, I'll probably see you there again. Yeah, well, I, I okay. hope too. We'll have a table there. Awesome. Yeah, come see us. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll definitely keep in touch with you guys, and maybe you guys can come down here and do some research with me also. Now, where That'd exactly awesome. are you? Huh? Where exactly are you? I live in the Cumberland Gap area, just on the uh, in the Virginia side, right where the Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia all meet in together there. And yeah, I ironically, research, uh, you might like this. We had a cop write us uh, a few months, uh, well, about two months ago, to let us know that there in the Virginia area, he has an. He said he can guarantee us that he has an upright painted problem wandering around there. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, definitely interested in that. He said he was a deputy sheriff. He didn't come right out and give the exact location, but he, he said that he definitely had a problem there. Or a creep or a creature anyway. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh definitely wanna look into that then. Because I I do a lot of traveling too, but anything close to home then I definitely uh want to jump right in on there because it's not that far for me to go. Easier for me to research, too. If we wasn't so busy at work, we'd spend probably 80 or 90% of our time researching and filming. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That job thing, it's interfering in our monster hunting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It's a shame a man can't <laughs> figure out a way to make monster hunting his occupation. I know. Yep. Well, I thank I you guys for having me on the show. I want to go to Land Between the Lakes and put him in a cage filming and come myself to see if I could get something to come after me. <laughs> of course, my <laughs> wife says, no, you're not cage. doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've am i done a lot of, been doing some research in that area. I'm drawn to that area big time. I'm, I'm going to have to get with you guys and we're going to have to do some do some research and tracking down in there. Man, it's an interesting area. Oh, I'd love area. it. Very soon we're going to go down there and check out another couple of sites and then try to go back and camp in those sites, you know, kind of scout it out in the day and find a yep. good place and go back. Yeah, definitely. Know where my uh-huh. evacuation uh-huh. routes are if I have to get out. Exactly. Yeah, because they're dangerous. That's... A lot of people think that these are, they're not friendly like people want to claim. Uh, no, they're not friendly for us, folks. No. No, they're not. Very aggressive. And it seems as time goes on, they get more and more aggressive. That's true. Yep. But, yeah, we'll Matthew, definitely keep in touch. It has absolutely been a pleasure to touch base with you again. Thank you for doing the show. We look forward to working with you in the future and doing a, a, a lot of research together. And Elijah, I'm going to do something tonight that I normally forget to do. Do you have anything that you want to add in closing? I know you're pretty excited about your, uh, the first T-shirts that we got today. Yes, we just got a first shipment of glow-in-the-dark T-shirts, so that's, a, that's really cool. We're trying to remake a lot of our older Nightmare Nuggets so we can put them on a DVD at some point, uh, remaking them from the ground up. And other than that, I reckon just... better. Yeah, I want to make them better. And other than that, I reckon just, Matthew, thank you for coming on. Well, thank you guys for having me. Sir, well, you have a good rest of the weekend. Okay, you too. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Take care, well, brother. Elijah, that's another one in the books. And until next time, this is Johnny and Elijah at Cryptid Studies Institute Radio. Just saying, you know, stay groovy, guys. Bye-bye. Stay Bye-bye. groovy. Take care.